In this lesson, we are going to go over how to solve quadratic equations using factoring. So ever since we were much younger, we've all done equations like this, for example, where you have to solve for x. But this is called a linear equation, and they are really easy to solve. So what is a quadratic equation? A quadratic equation is an equation when after you have simplified everything, you end up having something with a x to the power of 2. That is what makes something a quadratic equation. And I'm going to show you all the different techniques. We're going to do quite a lot of examples today. We're going to be looking at trinomial techniques, difference of square techniques, common factor techniques, all sorts of different techniques with quadratics. So here's our first question. So if you can realize that there is a quadratic, then what you need to do is the following. Take everything to one side. Okay, so let's do that first. Let's let that be step one. Okay, so take everything to one side. So let's take this negative seven over. So we're gonna end up with m squared minus nine m plus 13 plus seven, and then make the other side equal to zero. The zero is your friend. You want to see the zero on the other side. So then we're gonna end up with m squared, take away nine m, add 20, and we make that equal to zero. Now what you do, is once you've done that, okay, then you are going to factorize. Now that could be um, always looking for a common factor first, because remember, if you've watched my videos on factorizing, you would know that that's what we've been saying, right? Take out a common factor first. Then after that, then you need to see, is it a common, I mean, is it a difference of square? Is it a trinomial? So here we can't take out a common factor, okay? So they, that's already, that part's done. So what we're gonna do now is we, we realize that this is a trinomial. Now if you haven't, well if you're not that good with trinomials, then go watch my videos on how to factor trinomials. Okay, so what we do is remember that there's different types of trinomials. There's ones where this number in the front is a one, which is what we have over here, but then you also get others where this number is like a five, and that's where you gotta use this technique. So if you've watched my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about right now, but this one just has a one in the front. So this is the easy type where you're literally just gonna look at this number over here, and you're gonna write out all of the different factors or the different ways of making that number. For example, one times 20, two times 10, four times five. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're now gonna look at these combinations. So let's start with the one and the 20. And you gotta ask yourself, would it be possible to use a one and a 20 to make a minus nine by either plusing or minusing? Well, that's definitely not gonna work. So this also wouldn't work. But if we use this one, then this would work perfectly. Because if you say minus four, minus five, then that gives you minus nine. Okay, so that's a good thing. So what we now do is we open up our two brackets and um, you're gonna put your minus four and your minus five. And then in here, you're gonna put an M and an M so that if you had to multiply these two together, it would give you M squared. Okay, and now, so that's where, that's where we would normally stop if, if, this, if I just said factorize. But here we also have an equation. So what you're gonna do now is once you have the brackets, I want you to just make both of the brackets equal to zero. So you're just gonna go m minus four equals to zero or m minus five equals to zero. And then I want you to just go solve this one and then I want you to go solve that one. Okay, so that's gonna be m equals to four because you take the four over or m equals to five. And that is the answer, that is literally it. So you get two answers because of the two over there. So you're gonna get two answers. Here's our next example. So what I want you to do is um, take everything to the one side, okay? So I'm gonna take this over to the left-hand side. So you're gonna end up with negative x squared, negative 36 plus x squared, sorry, plus two x squared, and you're gonna make that equal to zero. Then what you're gonna do is combine these two together. So that's gonna give you um, x squared, now, at this step, you have options. So what you could do here is, I'm gonna show you two different options and you must just do what you feel is more comfortable for you. So option number one is you could see this as a difference of squares, 
right? Because remember what we've said about difference of squares. It's got two terms. There is a negative in between them. And each one is a perfect square. So for example, x times x gives you x squared and 6 times 6 gives you 36. So if you know how to factorize difference of squares, then that would be a nice approach. So you'd put x and x, um, a plus and a minus, and then 6 and 6. Then when you've got the brackets, you can do what we did earlier. You can just say x plus 6 equals to 0 or x minus 6 equals to 0. And then you just go solve. So we can say that x equals to negative 6 or x equals 6. Now, your other option is where you rather take the 36 over to the other side. So you end up with x squared equals 36. And then, remember we did that, maybe you've watched that lesson of, of, of mine where we learned how to solve equations by taking the square root. So what you could do here is you could square root both sides, okay? Um, because what you do to the one side, you do to the other. And that's gonna give you x equals to um, square root of 36, which is six. But then you must always remember to say plus and minus whenever you take a square root. And there you're getting your plus and minus six. And so here you're getting your plus and minus six. Here's our next example. So as soon as you see that there is a quadratic term, take everything to the one side, okay? So I'm gonna bring the six x over and the 16. Now, that's not a difference of square, but that's now a trinomial. And so this is an easy trinomial where the number in the front is a one. So all you do is you look at this number and you write out the different factors. So eight times two, four times four. And so, if you had to take an eight and a two, you would be able to make a positive six. How would you do that? By saying eight minus two. So the eight is a positive, the eight is a positive, and the minus, and the minus two is a negative. And then you just put x and x, and then we say equals to zero. Now that we've got the brackets, the, that's a good thing, brackets are your friends, you say x plus eight equals to zero, or x minus two equals to zero, and then you just go solve each one. So x equals to negative eight, or x equals two. Here's our next question. So as soon as you see that quadratic term, take everything to one side. So I'm gonna take everything to the left. So we're gonna end up with a p squared on the left as a positive, minus 12, minus p, minus eight. Because when that eight comes over, it becomes negative. We then end up with p squared, minus p, minus 20 equals to zero. And now we have a trinomial. So we look at this number here, which is 20, and we can write 20 as five times four, uh, 10 times two, one times 20. So we need to try make the number minus one because that's what we have over here. So we're gonna try make minus one. So to make minus one, you could use a five and a four, and that could be four take away five because four take away five is negative one. So we then make two brackets and we say positive four and negative five and then you just say p and p and then you just go solve. So you can say p plus four equals to zero or p minus five equals to zero. And then if you had to just go solve that, you'd get that p is equal to negative four or p is equal to five. All right, so here's an interesting one. We've got a quadratic term over there and over there. That's still okay. We do the same thing. We take everything to the one side like that. And so then what happens is we say 13 take away five, which is eight. And now the rule is we factorize. Now this is not a difference of square. This is not a trinomial. So Kevin, what are we gonna do? Well, remember rule number one of factorizing. Take out a common factor, yes. So the common factor here would actually be the number eight, and you can take out an a, because this one has a squared, this one is a, so we can definitely take out an a, and then we'd be left with a take away, um, a take away seven. And so we can then end up with eight a equals to zero, or a take away seven equals to zero, and so a is equal to zero, or a is equal to seven. 
And so we've got three more examples. So here we have quadratic term, but then here we also have a quadratic term. So let's take this and move it over to the left hand side. So that's going to be 8n squared, take away 7n squared, uh, take away 11n plus 23 plus 1, and that's equal to 0. So I'm going to put these two together now. So that's going to be n to the power of 2, take away 11n plus 24 equals zero. And there we have our beautiful trinomial, where this number in the front is a one, so we don't need to worry about that. We look at this number 24, and we know that 24 is the same as one times 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six. Now, we're trying to make the number minus 11. So the only way you could do that is by using these two over here. And so you could say three plus eight, but that's not correct because that gives you 11. You could say minus three plus eight, but that's not gonna work because that gives you five. You could say three take away eight, but that's negative five. But if you say negative three, negative eight, then that gives you negative 11. And so what we can do now is make two brackets and then we go n and n, and then we can say minus 3 and minus 8. And what happens now is we then say n minus 3 equals to 0, or n minus 8 equals to 0, and then we just solve. So n would be equal to 3, or n would be equal to 8. Two more examples. So here we have our quadratic term, so then we just take everything to the one side, like that, and so we end up with b squared plus 14b plus 48 equals to zero. And then what we do is it's a trinomial, so we look at this number 48, and that is the same as one times 48, two times 24, three times 16, uh, four times 12, uh, six times, oh no, that doesn't work. Oh no, six times eight, that does work. Um, five, six, seven, 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 no, nine, I think that's about it, eh? And, oh, 12 times four, oh, we've got that already, four times 12 is the same as 12 times four. Okay, so now we're gonna try and make the number 14. Now you can make the number 14 by using these two. Six plus eight is 14. So we make two brackets, and you're just gonna say B and B, and then plus six and plus eight. And then if you had to go solve, you'd get B equals to negative six, or b equals to negative 8. And then let's do one more example. Well done, guys. It's been quite a long one. So if you're still here, you're awesome. So you, you, you're working hard and you're trying. And that's what counts. Okay, so here we have an x squared term. So we're just going to take everything over to the one side. So I just like to put these x's together. Okay, and so now we can just combine them to become 9x plus 18. So this is a trinomial. So what we do is we look at the 18, and that is the same as 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and that's it. So now we've got to try and make 9. So that would be these two, because 3 plus 6 equals to 9. So we can make our two brackets, and we put x and x, positive 3, positive 6, Kevin, positive 6, and if you had to then go solve, you'd say x plus 3 equals to 0, or x plus 6 is equal to 0, and so therefore x is equal to negative 3, or x is equal to negative 6.